Right, well being as I've reached a milestone of 600 subscribers, or 606 to be precise, this video is going to be a special video for 600 subscribers. Gosh, thanks. It means a lot to me. The goal 4000 is still up there, but having 600 subscribers means that it's one step closer to 1000. And so, for this video to commemorate this, we are going to do a review of the Hornby Intercity Executive Livery HST Power Cars from Hornby. Now interestingly, when I reached 500 subscribers, I did a 500 subscriber special which was a review of the Hornby HST, though that one was in cross country livery. And for those of you that have seen the 6400 Panier review, which I'm sure most of you will have seen it by now, I trust, I touched in that video that I do not have the cross country livery HST anymore because I wanted to get this livery instead simply because well for a start the coaches for the cross country HST power cars are not easy to get hold of I've only ever managed to get hold of two which were the TGS coaches which were guards compartments I do believe uh, when I could get my hands on some coaches especially on eBay there were people who were charging ridiculous prices for them I saw one coach on there for £129 and I'm sorry but that's just ridiculous and it's you know it's for one coach it's not worth it if it had been like six or five that would be more reasonable but you know £129 for one coach it's no a big note written all over it and I've also seen four coaches on there for £179 which is a little bit steeper so that was partially one of the reasons why I got hold, got rid of the cross country HST but the other reason is to be honest from the start I did want a HST in this livery anyway because I think this livery is iconic and it's definitely one of the more attractive liveries out there it's not a livery I grew up with because by the time I was born in 1994 it would have been the Intercity Swallow livery. But I really do like this livery because it's just so smart. I love the yellow and the blue and the white there as well. Which it reminds me of the BR Blue and Grey livery. And I have got some Mark III coaches coming for this as well because these HST power cars, although they've been released before when Hornby first released the HSTs, uh, this particular pack was released last year which is when I got the cross country power cars as the product code for this is R3138 which were released last year as well as the Mark 3's which I have ordered two at this point but they haven't arrived yet. I will order another two and then I have a rake of for them which will be a rake I'm pleased about because at least then I can actually get the couches for them however you will not be seeing the Mark 3's in this video there will be a follow up video where I do a video on the Mark 3's when they arrive and when I get the full rake of them so in this video they are going to be coupled up to the BR Blue and Grey stock which is Mark 1's and a Mark 2 so it is going to look a bit unusual which should look quite interesting as well. Now these HST power cars are new but I've had them for a while. I've had them since February and I haven't yet ran them let alone open them up and look at them. Okay well I have opened them up but I didn't look at them properly because all I did was unfold the tissue paper while I was still in the box and just have a look at them there but I didn't look at them close up or in detail properly so we are finally going to do that today because I have been sat in their box for ages now just crying out waiting to be opened but they're now going to be open now okay so let's get this open and see what it's like I mean I do already know what these HST power cars are like because well 
considering that they were first released in 2008 and previously owned the cross country HST power cars, they are stunning models. Which you'll see in a second. So the box lever has come off, now that was hard to take off, it was quite a bit stiff. So you've got photographs of the power cars on the front there, and it tells you on the bottom what you get, but it also tells you what you get on this box flap here. But either way, then on the back we have the brief history of the Class 43, better known to you and I as the HST which is short for high speed train or the Intercity 125 it's also known as because its maximum top speed is 125 miles per hour so the class 43 HSTs were first built between 1975 and 1982 at Braille Crew Works as we all know and 197 of them were built in total and it's the fastest diesel locomotive in the world which this has the record for 148 miles per hour. I know I said the 125 is the top speed, but that's the regular service speed, basically. Even though it's unofficially clamped, it's been broken twice. And the HSTs were originally conceived as a cheaper, more reliable alternative to the advanced passenger train in the early 1970s, which, of course, as we all know, was the first tilting train introduced on British Rail but it only lasted a year or something like that and the power cars first started off as the prototypes being power cars 41001 and 41002 and because the design was successful this later led to the production orders of the HST as we see today. Then following the evaluation of this prototype design and the change of name to high speed trains, British Rail placed orders for similar trains for use in the Western, Eastern, Scottish and London Midland regions. And they were originally conceived as diesel multiple units when originally built at Crew Works and allocated to the Class 253 to the Western region on the class 254 for the eastern region and it was envisaged that the sets would remain in fixed formation and when the HSTs first came out these were originally a driving motor brake trailer firsts, trailer seconds, a trailer restaurant unclassified kitchen and trailer restaurant second buffet later power cars had no guards equipment due to the trailer guard second, the TGS carriages being built by 1987 most power cars were simply classified as driving motor although they still had luggage van space retaining a window by the luggage door on each side but following problems with the power cars and the operational ease of removing power cars to perform scheduled maintenance unit formations were abandoned and from then on HSTs were considered to be formed of two power cars at each end with a rake of Mark III carriages in between so the class 43 locomotive prefix was adopted and then in 1987 came the electric electrification hard to pronounce <laughs> on the eastern region. Well at that time BR realised that the Mark IVs for the Class 91 and the 89 were not going to be finished in time. So eight of the eastern power cars were carried out at Derby Engineering Development for work, <laughs> whilst another six had the lower balances removed and had buffers fitted. Which is quite interesting. And they were originally all fitted with the Valenter engines until they were replaced with the MTUs which is more economical basically to use and more reliable apparently so they're not really fitted with them now and they are German engines basically and also you get some information about the HSTs you get in the pack these ones being numbered W43033 and W43032 and it mentions they were originally livered in the city corporate blue and grey known as the executive with the yellow front continuing down the side this led to the nickname flying banana they now form part of the great western fleet and are livery on first neon blue with dynamic lines and are based at 
Oh crikey, I'm not even going to pronounce that. <laughs> Which, they are based at the depot at Plymouth. Basically, that's all you need to know. So that's more than enough brief history, I think, for the HST. So I don't want to give too much out. So we'll put the box sleeve to one side and we'll get on with the unboxing. Okay, so now we open up the box flap so we can get this box open. Well, of course. And then we'll just slide out the tray, which is the infamous polystyrene packaging with the finger holes. Which I do not like this packaging, but you know, if you want this model, then this is the packaging you're going to get. Because I would have thought by now Hornby would have done away with the polystyrene packaging completely and use two of these plastic boxes in the box that you get with the HST power cars. But oh well, we can't have everything at the end of the day. So then we take off this giant piece of white paper that's sellotaped onto the front. And then you get the instructions for the Class 43 HST. When they first brought these out, you used to get two of these, which was good because if you lost the others, you had a spare, but they weren't really much different to the other, basically. But now, with Hornby bringing out the HSTs again, they're only supplying one of these. But either way, so it's the usual thing, lubrication, body removal, fitting the DCC decoder, should you want to, and replacing the drive tubes and the fans. I'm not sure if this HST is going to have the rotating fans because on some models the HSTs have them and on some others they don't. But then the fans only spin on the motor car anyway, they don't on the dummy. Basically. And then you've got removing the transit brackets as well. So it's the usual thing, so we'll put them to one side. Ready to go into the folder later. We'll take off this giant piece of white paper. And you've got the tissue paper. Ho <laughs> ho! Right, so, in fact, <coughs> being there's a transit bracket in there, we might as well get the loco cradle on standby. Because we are going to need it. So we'll get the motor car out first. And I've got some sort of DIY tool going on now, so do excuse that. Okay, so we need to remove that bracket. So I've got a little screwdriver here, which is a crosshead one or star head just like the screw that's fitted to the bracket there which you need to use the right screwdriver for this I should point out I don't think you need to be told that but I'm going to tell you anyway okay so it has been a while um, to you it's going to be like minutes but it's actually been a fair while because I didn't want to record the video whilst the neighbour was doing DIY in the back garden because then otherwise, if I was talking with the DIY tools being sounding in the background, that would be a little bit off-putting. So I've had to wait a while. You know, it's funny, because over the past couple of days when I've tried to film this video, it's been raining. Heavily. And so I didn't film the video, because then you'd hear the pitter-pattering on the shed roof. And so it, the video wouldn't come out right. And then when I start to film the video, when I can finally do it... People are doing DIY in the back garden. Well, I'm not having a go, I'm just pointing that out. It's just coincidence, basically. It's just sod's law. One of them things. Okay, so let's get this screw out. Which has just come out now, as we speak. So just take the bracket out and then the screw. There we go. So I won't need this cradle anymore. Well, not for this video anyway.
I might need to glue that back on actually, but that's not really important right now. It must have just come off then when I was at the lock on the cradle. It was only stuck on with a glue gun anyway, so I can just glue it back on. And the only reason I'm able to scratch is because, well, if you buy one, it costs money. And the original one I had, it got a load of oil in it. And so it would get it on the models, and so I didn't really want that. So let's get the dummy car out. Which comes out like so. Then we'll just put the polystyrene tray to one side. Get rid of the screwdriver. And everything's just fallen on the floor. Excellent. Then we'll get rid of the bracket because we're not going to need that now. And the screw we can keep, the bracket I'm not sure what we can use it for. And although I have no intention of building them anyway, because they can be used again for other things I'm sure. Right, now we are free to look at the power cars. So, let's look at the motor car first and then we'll look at the dummy unit after. So we'll take that out of shot. So we'll take off this tissue paper, which I do not like. I have no idea why Hornby are still using it. And I wish that shed door would stay open. You know, the wind's getting up now. That's starting to get a tad bit annoying, but I'll press on. Might have to get something heavy in front of the door, actually, to stop it blowing open again. But anyway, so we'll take the tissue paper off. And then we can put the model down, and then scrunch up the tissue paper, and then put it in the bin. And we'll just down the model a bit, because it has been laying in a polystyrene box for quite some time. Using an old makeup brush. And now we are free to have a look at the model in all its glory. Wow. Just look at this. This is absolutely stunning. Where do we start? Well, first of all, if you don't own one of these Super Data HST models, then you've got to, because they are much better than what Hornby used to make in terms of a HST, which are the cheaper ones that lack detail, have the ring filled motors, and have the big fat chunky couplings on the back with no hooks on and lights that you can't even see, that are very dim. Because the HSTs they brought out before, they weren't as good as this. There's just something about them that just didn't look like the real thing. These ones definitely do. Because they have so much more detail and they look much, much closer to the real thing, unlike the cheaper ones, which I didn't really like, to be honest, because they aren't as good as these. So I was extremely glad in, was it 2009 when they first brought out these HST models? I think it was, I can't remember. I'm sure someone will point that out in the comments. So I was really glad that Hornby went and retooled it and made it much better. So if you want a HST, pick your favourite livery, or even if it's a livery you grew up with, and get it, because you won't be disappointed. But onto the detail, first of all, it's quite heavy. But it needs to be heavy, because without the weight, this model wouldn't be able to pull the Mark 3s that you would have behind it. So then it would be useless. Just look at the detail on the bogies. You've got the steps there, the axle boxes with rivets on, the pipe work, and all this other detail here. None of it's painted, but then... If you look at the HSTs in reality, none of the bits on the bogies are painted anyway. And that is something you can do yourself. But just look at that, that is just stunning. And just look at the detail on the wheels as well. Those dots on the wheels. Just looks really good. And the detail on the fuel tank. I've got this little, what I do believe is an air tank of some sort. And all this pipe work. And none of it's entirely moulded. Some of it has been put on like this pipe work here. 
and it actually does look realistic. There's even some rivets on that as well, and there's, then there's the fuel tank that has rivets on. And just look at all this detail, and there's the fuel tank dialers there, which has got rivets round, round that as well. And it's hard to see, but there is some separately put on detail underneath there, which is some sort of pipe work. It is hard to see, but you can just about see it. And that is fragile, so I'll do be care with, do be careful with it. So that didn't roll off my tongue then, quite. <laughs> then at the back, you got some air tanks with pipe work on, which is a really nice touch. You got a knuckle coupling at the back, and then this is the coupling. Now it's not a big fat chunky one, but then it's not a slim one either. But it's a medium one so that's okay and there's a hook on the back so you can couple both power cars together unlike the ring field motor cheapo power cars if you wanted to couple the power cars together you'd have to have the motor power car facing back to back against the dummy so it would be pushing it which wasn't as good then to be honest but even so you've got c3 printed on the back we all know what that means so i'm not going to bother you got the warning signs on the back and the gangway, it's beautifully detailed. There's rivets inside there, glazing, a door handle, and there's even a window there at the side, which you can actually see into, so that's really good. You've got windows in the side of the guards compartment there as well. There's some rivets down the side of the door, and this here, which is a hinge of some sort that's painted and got rivets on. Guard is crisply printed on the door there, so it lets you know it's a guard door. There's separately put on handrail there, which is really nice. And then there's the running number. Well, it's not actually the running number, but still it's the number of this power car. W43033. And the livery, it's spot on. The Intercity Executive livery. You've got the yellow and the blue and the grey with the white line going around it. It just looks so distinctive. And I just love the yellow on top of the cab. You know, that's what makes it look distinctive. Not just the yellow on the cab, but, you know, this livery is really iconic. It's, I think, it's one of the best liveries the HST has ever carried. It's just a shame that it doesn't exist anymore. But even so, you've got this large grill down the side, and just, you have some nice texture to it as well. And it actually looks like a real grill, unlike on the original power car models, it was just moulded onto the body. And it didn't look as authentic as this does. Then there's the BR Double Arrows logo, printed on the side, and the Intercity 125. Letter and numbering printed on the side, which looks really good. Then you've got a dial there, I'm not sure what that dial's for, but it's there anyway. You've got some detail on the valance, as you can see. Separately put on handrails, which are silver, which add some nice bling to it. There's a glazing in the door there, and the side there, the cab. And just look at this. I already knew it anyway. But the cab door is open, which is a really nice feature. You've got some door handles on the door there as well. And if you look inside the cab... Not only is the seats in there, but the painted, and even the controls and the dials, and all that. It's all painted inside the cab. I can't bring it any closer than this, because otherwise the model will hit the camera. But you can just about see that the detail in there is painted. And Hornby didn't need to do that, but they went out of their own way and they did it. So well done, Hornby. Then you got some glazing in the front there with a window wiper that's been separately put on unlike on the ring field motor cheapo power cars which is what I'm going to call them from now on they were just moulded into the window and they didn't even attempt to paint it to make it look like a windscreen wiper so it's nice that they've done that then there's the horn grills which you can actually see the horns inside them just look at that that is just fantastic it's just mind blowing these models are then these are the lights, which these are the original styled lights. Until when they had MTUs in them, they had round lights instead of these. And of course, 
this being in the executive livery, this will be modelled of one with a Valentor engine in it. It's not, of course, got a Valentor engine in it, of course, because it's not the real one, but still, you know what I mean. It will be based on the HST that has the Valentor in it. Because I do prefer the Valentors over the MTUs. I don't hate the MTUs, but I do prefer the Valentors because they have that characteristic scream to them that I just love hearing. But even so, there's some detail there on the front of the Valance nose, bonnet, whichever it is. And then there's the running number printed on the front there, 253016, which adds to the detail. And when that's coming towards you, wow. You now seeing that printed underneath, just looks fantastic, in my opinion. So it's nice to see they've done that. When Hornby first brought out the executive livery power cars, before they did this kind of detailing, I don't think they had it printed on, on there. So it's nice to see Hornby have done it on these models. These new improved super detail ones. Of course not going to get it with all of them, but on this livery this is accurate. This looks really good. you got another doll there at the side. There's the unit number again, W43033. More hand drafts down the side of the door. Another door that opens, of course. More glazing. The BR Double Arrows logo into City 125 printed on the side. Another grill with that fine texture. Another guard door with another, another separately put on hand drill, adding to the bling. And more windows in the door. And once again, guard printed on the side. And again, you've got the same level of detail as on the other side of the bogus in the fuel tank, but then there needs to be, because you wouldn't want anything different. And then here, that little bit of detail I told you about earlier, you can see it a bit more clearly here. And that does add to the detail, but again, like I said before, it's fragile, so do be careful. Because otherwise it'll break off, and you don't want that. Again, there's more rivets, so the rivet counters will be happy. More axle boxes in the footsteps. And then there's the roof. Now, this is top quality, just look at this. Got the lines at the top there as well. That's the exhaust plate. Not all HSTs had these in reality on the models. This particular one does, and it looks fantastic. could weather this if you wanted to, but I'm not going to, but there you go. You've got grills down the side, with the little texture of them, and something's just fallen down the back, so I apologise for that. But again, as I said, before I got interrupted by that noise, all these grills have a nice texture to them. You've got rivets here at the top of the roof, just in front of this exhaust plate. And just look at all these panels at the top, they've been painted, and that just adds to the detail. When you're looking... If you're looking down, on from where the roof is at the top of the model, you know, it's just really stunning. For granted, I know most of you are probably looking at the side and all the rest of the detail, but for looking at the roof and running around your layout, wow. Not that it's a big thing, but I just like that they painted the panels on the top. And then just look at these grills here. You've got rivets in between there, but just look at the detail inside it. That is just brilliant. And just look at that detail in there. All that lined texture. If that's the right word to use. And then these screws have been put up on the top. Just looks fantastic. So of course this is the HST that doesn't have the fans, but as I said before, not all of them have them. And it's only in the motor car where the fans spin. On the dummy it doesn't. So, you know, it doesn't really bother me that this HST doesn't have the fans. But then in reality, not all of them had fans in the rooms anyway. But, you know, just look at that detail. You know, it's just stunning. These HSTs, they really are mind-blowing. So, that's more than enough said on the dummy power car. Sorry, no, the dummy, the motor. Get it right. Sorry about that, I'll edit it out because I'm a professional. 
now we'll look at the dummy. Well, there we go. Okay, so for a dummy, it's pretty much going to have the same detail on it as on the motor. There's not much difference to the dummy unit because all the details going to be the same as the one that has the motor in other than the fact that this does not have a motor yeah these models have been in the box for a while and there's some sort of mark there but that'll just come off yeah but anyway that's not really important right now but still, just look at the detail on it. It's just like on the motor one. It's stunning. I mean, with the grills here, you can see through them. You can't with the one on the motor, but then that can't really be helped. But then that doesn't really matter anyway. Again, the Intercity Executive livery spot on. The yellow and the blue and the grey with the white lining going around it. And just look at how it's been done as well. It's been done so smooth. Which is really good. The detail on the bogies, steps, axle boxes, pipe work, and again just look at the detail on the wheels. Wow. The fuel tank detail is the same. Oh. Mm. Bit of bad focus there. <laughs> Rivets on the tank and the fuel tank dial. And some more detail here, which is really nice. Again, air tanks under the power car there. And again, another coupling that has a hook on it, so you can couple them both together. Knuckle coupling there, C3 printed on the ends there. Warning signs and the gangways there, which looks really nice. Again, the large grills, and I just love the texture. Separate one handrails, the BR double logo, and the Intercity 125 lettering and numbering. Just like on the motor unit. Again, opening doors. She wouldn't want one power car that has opening doors and another that has none. Again, glazing where there needs to be glazing, and I separately put on wiper. Painted cab interior. There's the running number again, printed on the front of the valance. And again, the amazing horn grills. And again, working lights, because this also has working lights. And again, the roof quality on the detail, it's just brilliant. It's the same as on the one on the motor. There's nothing different about it. You've got the panels painted the lines on the back more grills and the exhaust there the exhaust place and rivets as well you can't forget those but yeah these are fantastic models So that's it for the detail. Let's get these power cars on the track and see how they run. Okay, so here we are at the layout, of course. Where else would we be? <laughs> and so we're going to put the HS2 power cars onto the track. So the dummy one goes on first. So the dummy one's on. And this is the first time that they've been ran since I've had them. <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's get this to go back and couple it up rather than having to push the motor up, up to it. 
Oh yeah, look at that. It runs, of course. Okay, so let's get it going. Wow, now that is really smooth running. No grinding noises or jerky movement. But that's what we don't want. And then there's the lights on the front. It's white, coming towards us. It's hard to see in this light here, but they are there. And then they're red, coming away from us. If we come over to here, then you will see the lights much better. Yeah, there we go, so there's the lights in the front. And there's the lights at the back. But anyway, so there we go, passing the seaside. There's just ghosts there. There's no people there, but there will be. Then passing the engine shed. And then what's going to be an airfield. This isn't the fastest speed for a HST, but we will get them going faster in a bit. Then have the level crossing and through the tunnel. Then out the other end and past the sidings where the mineral wagons are, past the signal box and past the station, where all the passengers are waiting to get the train that's been delayed, although they might have to catch a railway replacement bus service. But this speed is nothing for a HST, it's not very fast, so let's get it going a bit faster. Let's give it the beans. Look at that, I tell you what, it's really mapping out, look at that. And that's nearly its top speed in model form. Let's get it going to its top speed. Look at that. It's a proper HST now, so don't call it a high speed train for nothing, folks. It is slightly harder to chase it now. And that just looks brilliant flying along the rails. High speed. I can't have a HST without running at this speed. Even at this speed there's no problems, but that's what you don't want. You don't want jerky movement or stuttering or any sort. It's just doing what a HST does best. Going at its top speed. Hang on a second, what's this? Oh no, it's the Rosses in the Police Class 47.
Okay, so we've had to make a stop for the Rosas of the railway layout in their police class 47 and they're not very happy that we have taken the HST up to its top speed. That's because engineering work has been carried out further down the line. Something that we didn't seem to know about. Psst, it's a joke. And so the driver has got three points on his licence for breaking the speed limit. So we can't take the HST up to its top speed. We can only go at half of its top speed. But either way, the Rosas have been very good to us to let it go for this one time and only give us three points. But next time we could have consequences. But, you know, that's just how things go and they are only trying to do their job at the end of the day. So we do thank them for that at least. So we'll just run at the HST at half its top speed. Even so though, even if we're not going to run it at its maximum speed, you know, this is still pretty fast for a HST. Because speed is what a HST was built to do. Anyway, so now we'll get some close-up shots of it running around the layout. Okay, so now we've got the HST power cars coupled up to the rake of BR Blue and Grey Mark 1s, with the exception of that Mark 2 there. It does look a bit unusual, but it also looks quite interesting as well at the same time. And they are in pretty much the same sort of livery that the HSTs are in. Although that coach there does have Intercity written on it, but when I get the Mark 3s, there, as I said earlier in this video, there will be a follow-up video on that, so look out for it. But either way, let's get this rather different looking train on the move. Oh yeah, look at that. It might look unusual, but it looks fantastic at the same time as well, I think. This first class sleeping car, that's a breakout sandwiched in between them. And there's the Mark II. And of course you've got the Pella cars at both ends. She goes passing the airfield. 
and then over the crossing and through the tunnel. Again, I know it's not going at a fast speed at the moment. We will get it going a little bit faster. As you can see, out through the tunnel and past the siding, passing the church and the signal box, and then passing through the station. Actually, let's get, get them going a bit faster now. There we go, that will do. So the if it's too fast, then it'll be harder to chase. And it is actually starting to rain outside now. And that Mark II is actually wobbling slightly. The camera isn't picking it up, but it's only suffering. Let's get a shot there of the rear lights. But yeah, that looks really good. Then passing the seaside where there still get to be some people added and some details. Oh, that will all come soon, trust me. I know I keep saying that, but that will be happening. But for now, you must wait and contain. There's also a cardboard box in my way down there, so I'm having to dodge that. And the camera strap's also getting caught in a few obstacles, so I'm doing that the best I can. Okay, so let's get some close-up shots of them. Or should we say them, because technically there's two of them.
So for the conclusion then, if you haven't yet got one of these HSTs from Hornby, then you've got to get one. Because they're just mind blowing and they are stunning. It doesn't matter what area you're modelling either. Because one of these HSTs will fit in with any layouts with no problems whatsoever. I just don't know what else to say really, I think that pretty much sums it up. But yeah, get one. And if you haven't, you need to. No. Okay. So now we've got an added bonus, which we're going to do a race. Can the HST go faster than the RA4 Pacific? Okay, well I'm sure the obvious answer to that is yes. I'm sure lots of people are shouting the screen, shouting yes, an A4 can go faster than an HST, or vice versa. But, this is in model form. And to see which can go the fastest, we're going to do this race. Which is just for fun, I should point out. It's just for fun. So, of course, we've got the Intercity Executive Livery HST Power Cars. Against LNER A4 Pacific 60017 Silver Fox. Which I've chosen this one because she hasn't featured much in any of my videos. She's only so far appeared in one which was that how-to video on gluing on nameplates which was a redone version of the renaming and renumbering how-to and to make it fair they're of course going to start off at the same time which I'll get the camera on the tripod and then get some close-up shots and they will go at the same speed as well to make it fair okay three two one Go. And they're off. And just to point out, they are indeed going at the same speed. And so Fox is far behind. Also, Foxes are just about got in front now. Although she's about to be overtaken by the HST power cars. Can she catch up? She could do. And of course the HST power cars are far in front. Here comes Silver Box. Still far behind. Okay, well Silver Fox is now going a bit faster. And now she has jumped into the leaves. Can she stay in the lead? Because the HSTs are on the tail. Silk Fox is currently in the lead. Of 
But the HST power cars are catching up. They're not far behind her. This is a very close race. This is neck and neck now. Oh! It looks like... Silver Fox is about to be thrashed by the HST power cars. It's neck and neck now, definitely. Here they come. Look at that. So who can make it first to the station? Oh, look at that. Silver Fox has been taken over. But she's still in the tail. And here come the HSTs. And we have a winner. A HST can go faster than an A4. I know it's just the form, but hey, it's just proven. So in first place, of course, it's the HST Powercox. And then in second place, it's Silver Fox. Okay, I should point out at this point, I did max out both models' powers, but they have been going at the same speed. Because remember, I made this fair. So that brings an end to the 600 subscriber special. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Yeah, absolutely no contest here. Done to the Intercity HST power cars. But we'll still give Silver Fox a pat on the back. Or tender. Which would be more appropriate.